Uh, so yeah, IoT, um, Internet of Things, home automation. That's that's my my uh, the focus of this talk, and the the premise of the whole thing is you know why do I think IoT and home automation are interesting growth markets for DNN V next, whatever the V next thing will be of DNN, which is of course a subject of a lot of discussions uh, around the conference. Um, so I'm going to briefly. Uh, mentioned a couple of things. The, the idea of this session, it's also, uh, you know, it's interactive, so don't hesitate to, uh, uh, you know, interrupt and say, hey, you know, I have a brilliant idea here. Um, come in, Sar. Uh, so if you have a, um, when, we, when we look at, when I look at IoT home automation, what I see is a you know, a perfect storm. This hasn't changed in the last few years, right? There's a perfect storm of like very, very cheap hardware, uh, ubiquitous networking, and uh, a market saturation of, of, of devices, right? Of mobile devices. Like you, basically, we have a little computer with us at all times that is connected to the internet. Um, <clears throat> But the question remains, like for for many people, uh, although there's there there are a whole bunch of enthusiasts in IoT. Um, when I speak to the let's say the people outside of that, they still look at me in puzzled, you know, puzzled. Like, is this really a thing or not? It's been you know you've been talking about this for a few years. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I I didn't see it coming to my world yet. You know, I don't have an Arduino in my kitchen. So wow. what is this <laughs> exactly? It's like, why not? <laughs> and does it provide real, va real value? I keep, you know, the, the one anecdote I keep coming back to is a discussion I just had with Vicente uh, two years ago when we were compiling the program for the conference and I was making a pitch for more IoT related content. And he was like, yeah, but you know, what would that mean for my customers? And it's true that that is a, um, a, a much more difficult uh, debate then is it technically interesting right technically interesting yeah absolutely but you know the real value uh, to to end users is still um, uh, not always clear so uh, that's for me where IOT and home automation stands please do come in and uh, what you know here, here are a couple of things I mean this is this is I think one of the main reasons why uh, why there isn't more of it um, why, why you don't see more of it uh, around yeah please just uh, just find a seat uh, it's okay we, uh, um, so one of one of the reasons I think that uh, yeah, or, or one, one, one of the hindrances in this market absolutely is the protocol hell right we all know DLL hell from from .NET. Um, their hell is, is protocols. Basically, you've got a whole bunch of vendors out there of professional equipment, and then you've got like a gazillion outlets in China that pump out hardware. Um, obviously, like in the open source zone, we're, we're talking about open source protocols, but the, of course, the proprietary uh, protocols are being used by the, uh, by the larger vendors. You know, Think about the Philips uh, Hue lights, for instance. The IKEA Tedfre, uh, uh, I think it's called. <laughs> Lamp. Little thing. Yeah, little thing. Uh, there is, um, uh, of course, the next. Uh, the next. Uh, it's going to be a popular session, even. That's cool. Um, the next. Uh, Nest. Sorry, Nest. Thing. I got a question. Yeah. Have you heard of, researched, or seen any of the lower one? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 I know, I know uh, a bit about it. Uh, yeah. But anyway, so Laura, yeah, Laura One is is uh, is like you've got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. I name here is Z-Wave, Zigbee, Enstion. I mean, Laura, uh, Laura One would fit in that list of like yet another protocol uh, yeah. uh, that is there. Sigfox is important for long range yeah. transmissions. Okay, Sigfox. I get one in my new home, but it's in totally different. No, it's totally different. I don't know what it is. 
And so, so I mean, and, and so all manufacturers are scrambling to kind of do something in this market, and and so I'm slowly shifting also to home automation, more focusing on home automation, which can be seen as a subset of, of IoT. Um, so Honeywell, of course, large uh, manufacturer of thermostats, uh, also active in this market. Siemens, I happen to own a um, heat pump uh, at home, and the control things are made by Siemens. Uh, and uh, so that's all, it was behind, like, um, you know, it's an intranet, they would have documentation, you would need special requests, etc., to see what this all was about. Um, I, lo and behold, when I went through this, this, this entertain me for this small anecdote, but um, because we had some issues with our heat pump, and there were several guys who had passed and said, yeah, no, it must be good. You know, they twisted the knobs a few times and then they left and the problems would reoccur. And I thought to myself, well, I'm an engineer. This can't be that hard, right? It's just a heating for God's sake. Um, so, so I started just to open this, this, this box that was there, like bunches of cables and just boxes with type numbers on them. So I thought, okay, well, Google, you know, Siemens ZTX, uh, this one. So, okay, that's a, that. All right. Yeah. And then you know, puzzling it together. Okay, so let's see with that. And then all of a sudden, one of these small boxes outside of it says a web server. Right. Oh, web server. I know a bit about web servers. <laughs> so, lo and behold, you go on your network. It's like, oh, okay, yeah. All click, plunk, router. Yes. Uh, uh, thing, right? Check where the thing. Oh, okay. Address, blah, 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 boom. Website comes up. So, I'm like, okay. Well, now we're in. Now we're in business. Now we're going to see what this is all about. And then this kind of like really antiquated uh, interface comes up, and I'm like, "Jeez, is this? Uh, I, I, I think I can actually bring it up from here because I'm online here. It's going to. We're going to hack you. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, like the ad the address will need to be blurred in the uh, public. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, I can I can turn on the and off the heating, of course, uh, uh, from here. Right. That's the kind of thing. Well, first thing already that you that you notice is it's a self signed certificate on that web server. So already a bunch of stuff like mobile uh, devices had like no 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 we're not dealing with anything like that, and. Um, then the fun part started where I saw that the session ID, which actually identifies every bloody call, it's just in the URL, right? It sticks it in the URL. <coughs> so. <coughs> so much for HTTPS, right? That's. <laughs> and. Um, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Semen sucks. Was the password? <laughs> no, 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 no. I would, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't be that cruel. Um, so here is the. Uh, so it takes it forever to let me actually click something because there's a bunch of JavaScript loading on this page that you're like that could have been done more efficient as well. Um, there is. Come on. I'm going to like. All right. I'm going to see if it will. Wait, all right. Stop your JavaScript. And then just click on this. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And now I go to, for instance, a come on, stop. This area over here. And I go, for instance, to what shall we do? Status or something? Or he just he so circuit one. But you can now. Here's a. Sorry, actually, <laughs> they're just doing AJAX calls behind the scenes to fill these values the whole time, so they're looping through them. So this web page is incredibly busy the whole time. Uh, so, and, and you're looking at this like, I, I think I would have done this better, you know, maybe I would have been able to land a good job at Siemens. <laughs> have, you, have, you, have you ever programmed a, a burglar alarm system? <laughs> no, I they coded like, like what I did PDP-8. 40 years back by yeah. coding numbers in there yeah. to program it. Yeah, it's incredible. <laughs> but those technical people know all the menus by a number by their hand. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. So, 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 so,
So right. if I if this allows me to just do a okay, well you go oh okay, it's just, it's just like is it, it's like eh, let me right click. Oh, no, it's still busy this page. Anyway, if you <laughs> here it is. Look. This is continuously, oh, oh, we're live again. Okay, 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 well, let's see. Uh, let's say for this one, right? So this is the set point of the temperature of the, um, of the living room. And I see a div display online. And there is a, an edit button somewhere behind here. So let's open dialog, etc. Uh, there you go. This, this, here's an on-click open dialog. And then a number, 526. So after a while, you find out that all these things, like under the surface, they have a number, which for some mysterious reason does not at all correspond to this number that's there. I don't know why. <laughs> Again, it's like puzzling. <laughs> you kind of work with the system. And uh, lo and behold, at one point, I was able to um, mimic from, a, uh, from another device uh, just logging in and getting a value or setting a value uh, in, in the heat pump. The thing is though, this thing has like a thousand or something parameters, right? If you, if you look at it, three numbers there, like, and it just goes on and on and on. And so my initial thought of like, well, how hard can this be? Like, okay, well, they, apparently they did make it pretty hard, this whole thing. And I now understand why these guys keep coming, coming around to my house, just twiddling, it, you know, pressing a few buttons, then going again and uh, sending a bill to the ones that delivered the system of astronomic proportions. And, and you're like, geez, the amount of money that's sunk into that. Well, that's why they advise to wait with the heat pumps until it's... Yeah, <laughs> until, the, until the technology is closed. Yeah. Well, here's, well, actually, I mean, and, and that's the surprising thing, right? Siemens is a, a very, very large player in this uh, domain. Like, the, what they do, they don't sell the whole heat pump. They sell the, the control uh, uh, things, right? The electronic controls for this. Um, what I did notice is that, yes, it's, it's, uh, it, it's a very specific engineering domain. And uh, you do need to kind of know what they're measuring at what point in this whole pump, because you know the the where the gas comes out, like the the speed of the the, the flow of the gas is being measured, the pressure, etc. And um, so you know, I had an ultimatum for myself: if they don't solve it by the summer, I'm going to stop all I do with DNN. I'm going to become an expert in heat pumps, because <laughs> apparently these guys can charge fucking enormous bills, <laughs> right? That's, that's, I definitely got into the wrong business when I saw his bill. Um, anyway, so that is an, an example of uh, the state of the art of home automation right now, um, like more behind the scenes kind of thing. Of course, as a regular user, you won't see this. You will just have your little dial in the room with the thermostat. But the maintenance guys see this, right? And they go in and they go, okay, analyze, you know, what's going on with the heat pump, etc. And this, this is this is the real, the real deal. So um, then, what you see in in home automation, of course, there's a lot of um, uh, in, in the open source part. Uh, of course, that's where all the efforts are going to bridge stuff, right? And they're saying, oh, well, if you if you use my framework, you can connect your Philips Hue lights, you can connect your IKEA stuff, you can connect the Nest or Honeywell, etc. Just you know, everything can connect to it, and, uh, and, and so that that has become a de facto kind of a sport in the um, uh, in that arena. Can I, uh, can I just say, do they all connect to your router, your standard router? I, I can, yeah, I, I, exactly. That, that thing is hooked up to my, to my so router. So it knows your password? Uh, I, if I give them my password? No, the password for entry to the router. No. no. There's no Wi-Fi password given to that. No, 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 the, uh, the, <laughs> no, because that, uh, that thing is connected physically to my router. Oh, through Ethernet. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, uh, hmm? No, that one, that one couldn't. The little web server thing was like, mm, no, just okay. like, and, and then of course I had to go through a Develo solution because <laughs> my office was not right next to my heating system. <laughs> At one point I had this, I had this 15 meter cable going through the, 
sort of the ground floor just to my routers. Like I've got to test some stuff, and the kids are going like, "What's you know, what's what's with the cable?" And the, <laughs> before we go out. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not AT. You can't use your own web server. No, 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 it's another port, and I can set the port. Oh, you can. I, I, I can tweak that. Now, that's one of the first things I, indeed, I was not doing. So, okay. And, of course, immediately I changed the password as well, because that was still the default password that was in the manual that I could download online. So, um, but I had the feeling that whoever sold me the heat pump didn't know an awful lot about this stuff, right? And that's going to be a recurring theme in what I'll be talking about this hour. <laughs> it's like, these people know desperately little about web development. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm going to branch a bit sideways into one of the protocols that is emerging as one of the standards in which stuff will communicate with each other. And um, I've, I've uh, held a talk uh, which also touched on this last year. Uh, so some of you may, may, uh, may be familiar with it. Who knows about MQTT? One person, two. All right, so MQTT this is great because it's got a lot of people for whom it's new knowledge. Uh, the message queuing telemetry transport uh, protocol, it's uh, not new. Uh, so 1990s, I looked it up on Wikipedia anyway. Uh, that's when it started by IBM, now it's an ISO protocol. Um, it's what is known as a pub sub messaging, publish subscribe messaging protocol and uh, it's it, I think its strength is in its simplicity so uh, basically a message has a topic uh, a quality of service saying how important it is that that message must arrive to those that need it and a payload and the payload is just a binary blob right you can define anything for the payload right? there's no other structure than that uh, basically in the message um, then what happens is that message goes over the line, over the wire, over Ethernet, uh, to a broker. So whoever sends the message knows an address of a broker, sends it there, and uh, the broker then takes care of dispatching it. Now, uh, there's a very simple uh, kind of example here. You know, messages come in, they're published to the broker. And subscribers for the message say, I would like to have messages with topic X, Y, Z. And then the broker takes care of that. They get that. So in the end, the publisher has no clue, doesn't need to have any clue about who subscribed it and the other way around. Like both of them just look at the broker and, and communicate with that. Um, so that message bus architecture um, is due to simplicity, like I said, that's its strength and has become quite popular in, uh, in, in the IoT world. But, you know, it, it's also used, um, what I read once, in, for instance, oil pipelines that, you know, run under the Atlantic where pressure and temperature, etc., is measured by devices that is sent back to, uh, you know, a broker that makes sure that these kind of things are monitored. Is, is there some way of committing? So if you pro produce a message with it, which is important or has yeah. a high, high priority item, yeah. that, the, that the broker knows that the subscriber must commit that he has received yes. and yes. So, the So the, co the quality of service is uh, like, like there's, there's the, I don't care, right? this <laughs> message, <laughs> meh, whatever. Uh, there's the quality of service of like, okay, uh, make sure it's, gets there and then there is the the highest quality of service like make sure it gets there only once okay. right so you can imagine for instance a payment that goes along you want that thing to be just once and confirmed by the other side to be just once so um i uh, will go out of this for a sec um, I will just give a brief demo of, um, of MQTT in action. So what I have is, I, I guess you remember those boxes from last year. Uh, those are there here, there, last year. Uh, it's a Raspberry 
pi w zero zero w in there there we go that's in there um, then there is a RFID reader and a display and a buzzer that I fitted into that and that was a whole project to get you guys to scan your badges when you came into sessions now I found out you guys were just too fucking lazy to scan your badges so, uh, it was a it was a nice experiment anyway but <laughs> but I did uh, do a number of things to this, uh, like on the on the Raspberry Pi at the moment, there is a broker running and a copy also of Node Red. Now, has anyone heard of Node Red? Yes. 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 Okay. I've tried, I've tried it yeah. once. So, so Node Red is a, um, a, a, a flow-based tool where you can easily wire things uh, together that need to happen. So I'm. Uh, I need to leave my poor old um, this one out. I'm going to log out, I guess. There you go. Boom. I'm going to start this up again. Or did I? I already started it up here. There you go. So. Um, no dread. This is the flow that I created for for the VNN Connect uh, reader for last year. So what happens here is the following. I'll just see if this pointer will help me. Yeah. There go. I've got a laser pointer as well, might as well use it. Um, eek. Is this thing uh, Yeah, there you go. Um, so what Node Red does is it allows you to combine various things graphically on a screen. It's, it runs in a browser, as you can see, and create little programs just by creating flows. And the kinds of things you can you can use are like the simplest one, for instance, this blue one is called Inject, which is basically something you can tune to say, okay, well every five seconds I want you to inject into this flow to start the flow. Usually you start with with one of those. Um, this one, for instance, is a node which actually does the read the RFID reader. So that's the one that, if I hold a card in front of it, it'll go. Uh, all of a sudden, there, this will kick off, right? And then the next thing it will do. There's the JavaScript function here. I said, okay, I want to get the ID from whatever card was scanned there, right? So there's a little bit of JavaScript behind the scene that I can add on that node. I say, okay, well, I, I, I know what format the message that thing sends down that pipeline. And when, uh, and at the same time, I want to beep. So that's, there's a little buzzer in there. So you flash the card in front of it, it will go beep, and we'll send the ID down this chain. And then I will, you know, do an if then. Here's like this is, or if else, basically I'm detecting if it's a special card, I had a fob that I would use to reset the thing, for instance, or to show me something on screen, whereas your cards in this would go through the other process, which, ah, fine. This, uh, you know, it would store the card into a database, and it would send a scan, and this, this mauve pink, the mauve one, uh, purple one, uh, they're actually MQTT nodes. So basically, it would then go to the broker, like, okay, I got ID this, and send it out. So that is then, you know, payload, right? This is, I've got my topic, RFID slash room slash one, quality of service, and uh, the payload is the payload of this message. So this, is, uh, like the, if, if you get into Node Red, what you'll see is it follows very closely that whole idea of MQTT, where between, on that wire, it's, uh, uh, a payload, basically. This is the payload of this thing going through this uh, flow. So um, now I have a um, a broker running on this, so that has an address of uh, 10.52.66.133, and I happen to have a um, little project here. <laughs> Uh, this is a Node MCU, uh, which is basically an Arduino with Wi-Fi 
uh, on it. You've got, you see the little Wi-Fi antenna at the top. Um, and an Arduino is a microcontroller. Who has played with Arduinos here? One, two, not enough, not enough, not good enough. Next year, it's going to be more. All right, you're going to go home and order a couple of Arduinos. Um, <laughs> Arduino is a microcontroller, which is not the same thing as a Raspberry Pi, which is a full-fledged computer. A microcontroller, all it does, it has basically two, it has a small program running into it. By the way, kudos to the Italians who invented the Arduino, right? It's uh, made in, made in uh, uh, Ivrea uh, in the north. So, uh, um, two methods, set up and loop, right? This is what you do when you get power or after the reset button is pushed. And this is what you do the whole time, right? This is, that, that's all the microcontroller does. It, it doesn't have any other kind of, kind of way to, to operate. Now, that is perfectly fine when you've got a temperature humidity sensor at the end of it, like this, that you connect, that you know how you can read the value of, and that you just want to fire every five minutes or two minutes. You want to fire off, like, this is the temperature, this is the humidity, right? And it's Wi-Fi. So we can also, you know, we can say which protocol it should communicate with. And we're going to, of course, use the MQTT pro protocol. So I've uh, plugged it in here, like so. And we're on the Mac side, and we're going to go to Visual Studio Code. And here I've got my SSID set up, UL Wireless. Can you guys see, little, see this okay? Um, haven't completely lost you yet. Um, so this is C, not a language we usually uh, use, but then again, we're not, I'm not creating like pages and pages of code in this either. Uh, it's, it's, I think it's a bastard language, but it is the kind of <laughs> the way to go with these, uh, um, with these little gizmos. So um, we can skip all the, this. Basically, the uh, the DHT pin. This is basically the pin that I've connected this to. And I was like, okay, well, I've got to connect it to pin five, and then what I need to do is. There's a setup Wi-Fi. Wait a second. Let's go down a little bit. And there's a callback. Come on. Reconnect. Those are all. Okay. Here we go. So, voice setup here. And void loop. Those are the two predefined methods for uh, for your Arduino uh, code. Right. So if you use the Arduino U, uh, UI, which is uh, IDE, which is also, uh, I, I'm using code here, but you can use the Arduino IDE, which is uh, dedicated to, our, uh, to Arduinos. Uh, but it's the same thing, right? same code. Uh, basically, you've got two methods, setup and loop. Right? That's what everything. And what am I doing in the setup? Well, I'm going to first you know, set the pins correctly and uh, set up my Wi-Fi, uh, set up my you know, this EMQTT server, uh, you know, make sure that we're connected to that and make sure we can get a call back as well uh, from that. And in the loop, what I'm doing is I'm getting the uh, temperature. Now, where do I get the temperature? There's a client loop. Here, here I'm just doing a test for uh, time. Um, it's nice because you're not on a web server. You can be really dirty with your uh, efficiency of your code. You don't care. This stuff runs really blazingly fast on this microcontroller that does nothing else than that, basically. Like, so what if it's not very efficient, as long as it works? Um, yeah, it's using energy. Yeah, it's only an issue when it's an issue, when it becomes an issue. But um, anyway, so I get the, the temperature, and then I'm going to publish to test slash uh, TH, test temperature humidity, and I'm going to send my data. Now, data basically I have encoded as JSON. Just uh, put the curly braces around it and said, okay, temperature. And that way in my node, in, uh, in the node red flow, it's very easy to pick up because you can just deserialize the JSON and start doing the temperature. What I want, I, I could put the temperature on that, on that thing, for instance. And so, when that's uploaded, right, with all that, 
what will happen is in this thing, I'm just going to refresh it. Um, what I've done here is in flow, I have a, um, I'm connected to the, uh, to the MQTT broker and I'm now subscribed to all the topics, right? Just the hashtag, you start with the hashtag, like anything after that, okay, I'm interested in it. So basically this is gonna capture everything that happens on the broker. And when I debug, I can see that I already got my first message in actually. So you, you see on, on this side, which is hard to see because it just falls off the screen. Let me just see if I can move that sideways a bit. There we go. Um, so every time, there we go, well, there's another one. So temperature 28.7 which is what it feels like more or less here, if I'm honest. And the humidity of uh, 50.6. So anyway, and it, this just goes on. You can stick it somewhere uh, within reach of your uh, Wi-Fi router and it will, will communicate that way. Um, again, in, in my opinion, the simplicity of it is its strength. <laughs> Basically do anything, just wire it together. Uh, Dat wordt straf vanavond. <laughs> All right. Uh, did, did you mention Fred for not red to test not red? Yeah, I was, I, was, I, was using, I was using not red because it's a really simple tool to, yeah. make, to visualize. What yes, ju yeah. just you, you can tell them there's a free uh, not red server, ah, yeah. okay. which, which is called Fred, yeah. and you can try and play for free. Yeah. So you don't have to install a not red server yourself if you want just to play and have a look. Right. I mean, installing it, yeah, exactly. That, that's, that's a good point. So there is a free node red environment that you can play with. But uh, if you have a Raspberry Pi, it's peanuts to install uh, node red as well. You know, it's, it's very easy to, it's a, there's, because there's a script. There's like apt get and blah, 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 and boom, off it goes. You know, it does all the work for you and you have node red installed. The one thing you need to be careful about, though, is that Node-RED is not, you know, uh, by default, it's HTTP. So if you're going to do everything in your house with Node-RED, which I think is possible and it's really awesome, but you put that on your router and you make that available online outside, yeah, we can tweak all those things. <laughs> so be careful with, uh, with security there. Uh, that's definitely. I, I was just going to ask, are you not doing anything with particles? No, no. Particles, uh, I believe, from the other side of the pond. Wow, okay. Arduino 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 Arduino. 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 where stuff comes from. <laughs> no, no, but it's true. I, 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 I have a number of devices, uh, but I do not have a particle, so if you want to... I'm just because, like, so I started with Arduino, I yeah. have a Raspberry Pi. I love particles. It's so much easier but it, to get connected, and yeah. and that they're like cloud. Their interface is in a browser. You can download it. You right. can command line it. But you literally have you used no. Oh. But you know, I, about how much how, how much how much is a particle though? A particle, like I don't know, fifteen dollars, nineteen dollars. Yeah. With that, because this this because uh, this thing is, I think two two and a half dollars, maybe three. This Node MCU, which uh, these things are so incredibly cost effective. These they, these are based on ESP eighty two sixty six, which is a, um, uh, a, a Chinese manufacturer uh, that Espressive they're called, and they make these Wi Fi capable chips that are Arduino compatible, and uh, they pump them out at a just unbeatable rate at the moment. Yeah, I, mean, like a, I, I yeah. have no doubt. I mean, I, I think particle is there is yeah. from China, but you should get through the experience of, of using it one time. Just yeah, oh, no, I, 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 and I intend to. I did, if I do run into other hardware every now and then, I'll, you know. Is there such a thing for Bluetooth? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, think, I believe the newest uh, ESPs also uh, support Bluetooth. Um. <coughs> but maybe, Peter, if, yeah. excuse me, yeah. maybe um, to make it clear, you don't need a hardware to play with not red. No. It, that, that's no, a software. You can use it with a flick button or with your keyboard exactly. and say if I receive an image, just like um, <coughs> if, 
if I resend, if I receive an email, I want to uh, turn on my view uh, light or something like this. So the hardware itself is not necessary to play with the programming uh, logic of Node-RED. Yeah. So uh, yeah, you, you, you really do, yeah, I think it's a good point. Before you start to confuse all these things together into one thing, I've been showing you various bits and pieces that I've just connected together. And the fact that the protocol MQTT is just out there and you can use it permits me to do that. But of course, you can use anything that speaks you know, MQTT to connect to each other, right? There is no, uh, you're not bound to a Raspberry Pi. Uh, Mosquito, the uh, MQTT broker, runs on a whole bunch of different hardware options. There are public, uh, you know, there are commercial uh, brokers out there that you, could, you don't need to install anything. Um, the hardware, again, the could be anything, could be a particle. Uh, the, um, uh, the sensors, whatever you want to do, yeah. Uh, there's just too many options in that sense, but make sure you get in your mind straight, you know, what, what sits where in this whole, in this whole thing. Um, so a couple of things, I, mean, they, they, I did a quick survey before the conference to look at, um, uh, to look at different open source frameworks that deal with uh, home automation. I give you some. Yep. So I, I, uh, I, I looked at various uh, open source frameworks uh, dealing with home automation. Um, I had experience with one, which is OpenHAB. I, I did my uh, system at home uh, with that, uh, which proved which permits me to actually, and, th and that's wh why I started the whole project of hacking that web server, um, because now I could, if this thing shows up, I, on my phone I see those values actually come out, the ones that I specified. Like, okay, I want to see the living room temperature, which is 18.6 Celsius, and I see that my, uh, my heat pump has a state of fault because an error is occurring, and I have some action buttons. I can reset it, which I can do here. Now it's resetting. Um, yeah. And I s see the uh, domestic cold water temperature set point as well, which is also too low. So anyway, uh, th that is because I connected it with OpenHAB. Now, uh, th then a, uh, when, I, when I got into that, um, uh, it's going to go there. All right. Um, awesome stuff, but then you then I I got really confused, seriously confused when uh, when I got into this uh, stuff because actually if I um, wanted to so so OpenHab is uh, the way it presents itself is like this myopenhab.org. I'm going to log in, there you go, log in, and, uh, and here we go. So I see, hmm, items, event, okay, so there you go, dashboard, first I have to click to this dashboard. Why I have a home screen with nothing on it, I don't know. Um, no, don't allow that. So welcome to OpenHab 2. I've got, you know, Home Builder, Log Viewer, Node Red, Open Having Help, the basic UI, the paper UI. And at that point, I'm like, okay, this, there, there is something going on here in terms of, I don't know, different development directions or something. It, it doesn't seem to have a very unified approach to what they want to achieve. So if I go into this part, I can't even do right click open. Paper UI, what do I see uh, besides Chevron Wright title, subtitle? Looks like it's having some, right, it will come alive. Right, there's an inbox control panel. I don't, and then configuration system. Like, I, and I should be able to add stuff to this, like my, um, 
uh, or I just saw audio, for instance, right? So like your, your receiver at home or something, my Denon receiver should be able to connect to this and probably that Philips Hue stuff as well. Um, the things I have, uh, items that were defined. Now, you obviously need a bit of education to get to grips with what all this is. And I did that back then, and it still left me with a, a number of serious questions. Uh, so this is the basic UI, basically looking at that data, but in the same way. Then the basic UI showed me um, this. So that's you know, temperatures, living room, heating mode, etc. Uh, well, uh, various values. That's the webcam picture of today. Um, and uh, if I go into the how panel, I can define that. Well, that's meant if you have a tablet and you want to stick that to the wall, then if you set it to that, it will have a tablet-friendly interface uh, for you to look at. But apparently, I didn't set that up, so you don't see that wonderful thing. But anyway, so different UIs, and it just leaves you wondering, like, what was the philosophy behind this thing? Like, where, the, where do they want to go? Turns out that actually they're, they're, the basic UI was their old UI, and they're revising this, this whole thing. And then the paper UI, UI was the new uh, UI for this whole, whole product. And you know, kudos to, to this guy who's doing this open source project, leading it on his, on his own with you know, maybe two or three other enthusiasts actually contributing code um, in keeping this alive. But you can see already like he's got a big task in front of him if he wants to build this out into a very flexible web-based system to manage what's going on behind the scenes. Because if you want to actually change something, right? So if you want to add those, those values, so I've got um, basically the, um, my, my heat pump will, through MQTT, I can query it, right? So I can say, okay, I want you know, this value uh, from my heat pump. And MQTT, of course, uh, is implemented in this, um, in this framework. So if I go to projects here and I go to um, yeah, this one, open hub two, I'm just gonna open code here. Um, so I have various, th this is basically, it's, yeah, there we go. This is the configuration to get all these values out of you know, my system and to wire that to the UI. And at this point when I, you know, because there's, there's some kind of a, a, um, a syntax that this guy devised, like, okay, it's an MQTT and if it's incoming, you go to the broker and it's, you know, PA pack slash string slash 2304 is the topic of the MQTT message. And then, you know, it's, it's a state thing. Anyway, long story short, I was, uh, at this at this point, it it, it reconfirmed something, and, and which was going to be where I wanted to go with this is like these guys are awesome at the whole home automation and IoT stuff, um, but I think we've got all of that already covered in DNN in terms of like how you extend stuff, how you install new things, how you manage <laughs> the content of something that is nebulous, that might grow, that might grow this way, that might grow that way. Um, I think that is where, where we have an enormous uh, um, advance in any CMS, but uh, uh, definitely DNN as well. So my, for me, the million dollar question is, uh, is this, um, would it be possible for DNN to act as an MQTT or a similar type of message bus broker. Because now you can imagine that if you would have some tiny .NET Core multi-platform running DNN that might not even have a web front end, but just might be like the broker, it just might be sitting there, but managing the usual stuff that we do with DNN, users, roles, 
uh, you know, uh, various other bits and pieces. And at the same time, be wired to uh, um, um, and implement a, a message bus within itself, right? Using the permissions that we have within DNN, you could make an incredibly advanced system that wires together stuff. And not only that, like for what for me the the um, how I'd like to frame it is at that point in time, devices and modules become both first class citizens in this framework. They be, they sit at an equal level. They might be talking to each other without knowing each other, right? So you could have a module that this displays or works with certain types of data, and at the other end there might be devices pumping that kind of data into DNN. And it would be very, very loosely coupled. And if you could build that such that it could run on a Pi or on Azure, or maybe even like in coordination with multiple fragmented ones, right, he's gonna take a break. Battery change. Perfect. Uh, so if you, uh, you could even imagine having these cores running in unison, like have multiple cores running in unison, right? Being able to have a distributed system that actually talks to each other because you're already using a message bus ar architecture, which is incredibly conducive to those kinds of solutions. Um, and then the, the actual DNN shell that we know would be something that operates as a shell around you know, one of those nodes, or maybe multiple of those nodes, and you say, okay, well, but the the actual core application, uh, you know, we've built as a .NET Core thing that can operate in any environment. So that was going to be my pitch today for uh, where I think we think outside of the box. Um, you know, where could where could we find a uh, a growth market uh, for DNN? Where could we get new enthusiasm? Um, technical enthusiasm, like tap into the market of these countless enthusiasts in IoT who for the most part, and I, you know, I, I don't want to be too harsh on them, but programming is not their first thing. If you see the guys doing the Arduino stuff, they know everything about electronics, and then you see the Arduino program that they created, and you're like, I would have written that differently, you know, that... <laughs> Uh, even as simple as a setup loop, and even though C is not my, not really my language, but uh, yeah, yeah like that, that could have been done a lot more efficient. Or you're, you know, you're recreating variables that you've just created while you're doing that down here. And so you see that they have a focus on the electronics. We have this focus on uh, extensible frameworks uh, of software, and I think the two can benefit from each other. Have you uh, looked into a platform called Everything? No. Good name. Good name. Yeah, it's, 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 that's a good name. Yeah, indeed. I mean, it seems like they're traveling down a similar path. I don't yep. know that it, it, it all lines up. I mean, you can pull up their website. Yep. Going to do that now. Every. Um, yeah. It's uh, every. Take, take out the E, the first E, take out the second E, everything. So E, B, R, Y. And oh, all right, yeah, yeah, of course. E, E, B, R, Y, T, H, N, G, dot com. Digitize your project. All right, let's look that. And they've got a, a platform somewhere. Right. I, I was, there's one of the things I came across and I was looking at. But what, so what, what I found, like when I, when I went through various other uh, uh, platforms and I showed a little list uh, of things I looked at is um, because of their focus, they're not focused on saying, oh, now let's have an ecosystem of module developers that can hook into the platform and start developing extra functionality for the system, right? They, they will do basically all the modules themselves. I don't know if this is different uh, and, and they have a marketplace, but. Uh, and I mean, one, one common uh, 
occurrence for someone who's a tinkerer and built something is, yeah. oh wow, I built something. Now I need to have a website for it. Yeah. So not only could they potentially use you know, a DNN CMS that's you know, IoT friendly for the yeah. IoT functionality, oh, but also the public facing pages, pages could be your marketing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and on top of that, you could accompany whatever you're doing in hardware with a module. Yeah. Right. That module would leverage then, the, and, and he would say, you know, just use that framework, install it, and it will work. So do you, do you think or feel that like, let's just say that, you know, yeah, everybody agreed, let's, let's try to make IoT a first class citizen and be in it. Yeah. Do you think, like, is it drastic changes that would have to occur? I, uh, yeah, it's, it's um, it needs a, um, uh, a careful, uh, some careful thought about where exactly you would sit within the current framework, like where you would start to dig, basically, and or, or start to build. Um, like one of the, one of the things I ran into when I thought, oh, you know what, I'm just going to see if I can do it as an extension of DNN and just loop into the data structure of DNN, is that if you're using IIS, it's not going to happen, right? Because MQTT is uh, uh, you know it's quite fault tolerant, etc. And but you can expect, of course, it needs to be designed to be able to scale massively, right, with the amount of messages coming in. And IIS is not built for that kind of thing. But when you talk about the .NET Core thing, you're like, oh yeah, that actually that is what they're after, right? This this kind of more Node.js type of approach to, oh, we're open a port here because that's where we're listening, we're getting stuff in here. And I'm opening this port here because that's where that kind of stuff is coming in. And within the constraints of the current framework, that's very hard to do. But when all of a sudden the doors are thrown open, so we're talking about .NET Core, uh, I'm like, well, those things become possible now, right? No. Did, are you aware of Microsoft's Sphere, what they released, the build? No. So it's their IFT right. platform or whatever. Yeah. And obviously, there's nothing built to make that. No. So that might be something that would I think so, and, and certainly, uh, I, I definitely, what I take away from those kind of things without the specifics of what they've built is we see that Microsoft also sees opportunities in IoT and home automation and is making efforts to try to make inroads in, in, in those uh, areas. So when we're talking about the kind of diplomatic efforts that we have to try to get Microsoft to help us again, these kind of initiatives obviously, obviously will help. Right, so well, we do a lot of with IoT and home automation as well. Um, so, would you join us? That they, they, they were touting the security all yeah. the way down to the silicone, all the way up to Azure, and the like they seven points in Yeah, that's yeah. I, I, but the device costs a lot. Yeah, exactly. That's a different. I now now I know what you're talking about. That that does branch though from from the current IoT market. So, although. Uh, I'm sure for the industrial purposes, uh, for the industrial market, that is very, very interesting, uh, given that most of the people that I follow <coughs> on YouTube with this kind of stuff, um, you know, they, they order stuff from China the whole time. Uh, I can't see making a lot of inroads there yet. Because, so, uh, so am I right in, in saying or saying that you, you think if we were on .NET Core, it would be a lot easier to embrace. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But because of scalability. Yeah. How, how, how can you could uh, the MQTT protocol most easily uh, ship data into the IIS as is today? Uh, why it could not work in IIS? Hmm? Why it could not work in IIS? Yeah, or how, how it could most easily work on IIS? It, I I don't think it can because it needs uh, first of all you need a a, a different port uh, and it's a different protocol, right, than an HTTP request, um, so... But that shouldn't pose a problem, should it? But, yeah, it's just, but you're, you're, yeah. Uh, I was thinking, not making any changes, just uh, yeah. the messages using the... Let's try it, let's try it. Let's try it. I, I, I would find it really interesting to see if we can open uh, a, a, an MQTT port uh, through the current infrastructure in, in, uh, of Microsoft. Because if you can tap into the data that you have in DNN, uh, then yeah, because then you can, like what is missing, like the regular broker, 
you can have a configuration of a file, what user is allowed to see what topic, right? But that is static, it's a file somewhere. And I think the whole thing comes to, will bloom the minute that we can say, well, we actually have a system that's dynamic, right? Just like we have with pages and users that have certain roles, uh, certain permissions on things through their roles, that changes continuously. And if then, you know, that whole brokerage is subject to that, uh, I think that's fairly new. I'm sure the guys that managed could scale that up, right? I mean, oh, I'm yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I don't have all the answers yet, but if anyone uh, is interested to run experiments or, you know, wants to share experiences themselves, uh, blog about stuff, uh, you know, feel free to reach out to me uh, to see if we can, uh, you know, combine our thoughts. Uh, on this stuff. Do you have a plan for gaining, uh, I mean like how are you going to get people behind your support, like is there a strategy here? Not yet, no, nope. there's no strategy. Be in the bar tonight. Yeah, <laughs> be in the bar tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a good start. Yeah. Can so, I, yes. Can I okay. ask something? Uh, uh, we've got another IoT solution for a client. Uh, the client orders in the web shop uh, food. Yeah. And the food has to be prepared, yeah. but it's in a bakery. Yeah. But everybody is doing things except looking at the screen. So uh, suddenly the, the bakery said, "I just uh, want uh, something uh, orange uh, with lights." And so we put on the lamps in his bakery, yeah. and with IoT, put the yeah. signal to the lamps when the order is in the, in the store. That's a, that's a great example.